Hello there and welcome to Genomi Stitch Club UK. My name is Julia and I'm one of the educators at, at Genomi. And the point of this club is to get you stitching, trying different techniques, etc., on your sewing machines. So this month we've got a little Christmas project. I'm going to try and hold this up very carefully. Get it in the. So um, I've gone all out with. Uh, angel bunting okay and this is mainly a reason for us and if I can just hold up this little one here to look at some of the decorative edge stitches okay which uh, you will have on your machine and what to do with them you can either do bunting or if you wanted to you could just do one little angel just to hang on the tray. A template which you can download from Genome UK on the website. There's a PDF that you can print out. And I'm going to go through the stitches that we can look at to just, uh, you know, fancy up that edging. And some of these stitches look so fabulous if you use them in dressmaking as well. But I just wanted to do it on a little project just so you can have a go. If you've got any questions while you're watching this video, then do put them in the comments below and I will get back to you. So why don't we get on with our angels? I'm going to bring you in a bit closer. Okay, and I'm going to start with the first sort of ones, the most obvious ones, okay, which are in the satin stitch section. So here we go. I'm what I'm looking for is this kind of finish here. So this little satin scallop stitch, you'll find this on lots and lots of machines. It's one of the most common. If you've got satin stitches on there, it's going to be one of the most common ones. Um, even some of the mechanical machines have this stitch too. So once you've actually stitched it out, because this is actually a very close stitch, I mean, I'm using it on felt here, so it, it is, generally speaking, it will be closer when I put it onto my actual wings. What it means is that you can actually trim right up to the edge on this so that you actually get the shaping in it. And you can do this with different shapes. So if I move along the bus in this section, I've gone, there's one, um, sometimes I use this for birds. <laughs> And I'm going to actually close that stitch length up a little bit here rather than the serving suggestion so that you get more of the look that it's going to get when we go on to the actual fabric. So this one here that would then give you an actual, um, a, almost like a, a pinking sheer effect on your edging. Uh, going through, we've also got Things like this one, I'm putting pictures up in the side for you. Now this one, I again could trim it right up, but I would trim it up, this, this is a good one if you're doing something quite complicated because you're trimming it up straight, but the actual effect that you get because of the stitching when you look at it, is that it's giving you that, that shaping there but obviously a lot easier to trim than something like that which takes a, a bit longer there's another one as well that uh, number 18 on here that until I stitched it out I didn't even realize because because it looks like a just the same almost the same as this one a scallop one but actually when you start stitching it out because of the way it's programmed it, you get a wavy edge so this is a really nice one to use as well. So all of those will be really effective and can be trimmed right up to the edge. There are a couple of others that you might find in your decorative stitches as well. So um, this one here, decorative 51, uh, where are we? Hang on, I'm going to go all the way through because it's quite a way along. Now this one, very pretty, 
and quite intricate and I'm definitely going to use this one for one set of my angel's wings. I'm going to use a few different stitches if only because I can and it's a good opportunity. Um, you know, this project is mainly <laughs> to make it so that we can use as many of these stitches as possible. But again, because it's basically a satin stitch, it means that we're going to be able to trim it up. Now, if you were using this for dressmaking, then what I would also be suggesting is once you've trimmed it up, that you use something like um, a, a fray check, uh, a fray stop, something like that. This is almost like a little clear glue. I use it on buttonholes as well. And once you've trimmed it, you can then just run this round or paint it on the edge. Sometimes that's easier with a little tiny brush um, on the edge and it stops it fraying out. As long as you don't cut into the stitching, you should be fine. Um, but on the collars, imagine these on little collars, little white collars on summer shirts and things like blouses and things like that. But also just for edging around cuffs, as I say, they, they would work really well. So I'm going to go on to uh, my wings here. And I have same thing as usual i want this to be stiffer so what i've actually done is i have bonder webbed two pieces of fabric together uh, this um is ba basically the off cuts of some curtains that i i shortened um but i thought this looked rather nice because it was the right color and it's got that kind of sheen to it as well which at christmas basically that's what we want don't we we want as much uh, sparkle as possible so i've drawn my template shape on here and what I've also added in as you can see this template's been used a fair few times as I've been working out those lines that I've given you I've added those on as well so put it on fold them up to the line draw your line and then fold the next one up and draw your line just so they're in the same place uh, when you're doing that decorative stitching as well but the first thing we want to do is actually go around the side so I'm going to start with that very basic uh, stitch that, as I said to you, that's in the satin section. And I'm going to go around with that one. And I'm not going to do it at night. This comes up at nine millimetres, but I'm going to make it just a little bit less. Take it down to seven, partly because it's slightly a smaller project. So I think it will look better. So what I'm doing here and... On this occasion, I'm not using the open toe foot because my F foot here, and I think you can, let me bring you right in, has got a little red arrow. Now, if your F foot just has the arrow, but the arrow is just sort of etched into the foot, what you can do is maybe put a little blob of, um, you know, a, a Sharpie or something like that, just to mark it. I find it really helpful to be able to see because I, this is what I'm going to use to follow this line round. Because this stitch is going to be going either side. Okay. And I don't want that to put me off keeping this line as I go round. So I've got my um, pivot on. Which means I'm alright here because I'm pretty much straight. But as I get up to this curve, I'm going to want to start doing a couple of lift and turns. So I've put my pivot on for that if you've got a knee lift uh, you might want to use that so as I'm starting to lose my line now I make sure I stop with the needle to the outside edge before I then turn and uh, this is always the rules when you're doing anything like this if you're doing satin stitching um, we've done quite a lot of applique projects haven't we uh, if it's on the if the curve is on the outside, then you stop on the outside. If the curve is on the inside, then you want to stop on the inside. So if the curve is coming like that, then you stop on the inside. Okay. So I've gone all the way around this one. Now, before I actually cut that one out, I'm going to do this one here. I've, I find that because I was doing a few of these, it was easier to put them on um, the bigger piece of, of fabric and, and draw on 
a couple. I actually had four uh, on this piece originally. So I'm going to look at one of the other stitches that we did. I'm going to look at this one here. So that was actually in the um, decorative section. And that was number 51, wasn't it? It was quite a long way down. There we go. When you are looking at these stitches, do make sure that the scallop is going the right way or you might have to either turn your work around or if you have the memory button and I'll put a little picture in the corner you can press that uh, not the mirror the mirroring button <laughs> too many m's uh, you can press that and it will just flip it to the other side okay so just double check on that when you're thinking about doing these sorts of things that you're on the right side and going in the right direction so I'm actually going to take that stitch length down on this stitch very slightly because it's not actually stitching out just as a satin stitch. So when I did my sample, I thought it could be a lot closer together, especially given that I want to trim it up. So I've taken it down to two as my stitch length. The serving suggestion was 2.5, I think. So I'm not going to go too fast with this one because it's a slightly more complicated stitch so I just want to give the machine time to actually do it. If you find that you're getting, you know, it's starting to look a bit messy or something, sometimes that's more about you that you're either going too fast, let the machine have time to do what it's supposed to do. Also don't push and pull now I've got my pivot on so I've lost my line so again if you start pushing and pulling the fabric to especially when you're working with a shape like this what you're going to find is that you you are then going to distort that stitching because obviously the machines can't fight you on that So I've just gone all the way around that one as well. So the next job to do is to trim this right up. Okay, now I'm going to come out a wee bit because I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm in danger of cutting fingers off because I've got the camera in between me. And take your time. Bizarrely enough, I find very often that the bigger scissors are better and I also find that if I move the actual fabric these are, are super sharp scissors anyway but if I move the fabric rather than the scissors it's much easier I mean this is just going to be your personal choice you might have if you've got little scissors I find sometimes my little scissors are very pointed and uh, catch a bit too much so I find it better if I'm actually further up the scissors when I'm doing this and as, as you can see I'm just kind of sidling around. Now I'm not going to watch you <laughs> make you watch me do all of this um, I'll cut these in two and, th and then finish those in a minute but look you can see that you've got that nice finish there the fabric is in this case bonder webbed anyway so it's got a little bit of extra something holding it as i said if i was doing this on an actual collar that was going to be washed then i would be using interfacing um probably soluble interfacing while i was actually doing the stitching to be honest so that that then would wash away um but i would definitely use fray check on it as well just to sort of keep that in place and you you know once it's had a good few washes you could then go back in with fray check again um you know it depends on the fabric you're using to be perfectly honest some fabrics fray far more than others don't and i mean i've used um obviously a contrast because I, I want this to show up but equally if you did a matching color it would be really lovely what i'm also going to do on these wings is some decorative stitching just because why wouldn't I? Um, so I'm just going to choose some of the 
my favourite stitches on here, of which, as you know, there are many. So have a little play and just find yourself some stitches, maybe ones that you haven't used before. I'm using quite ornate ones, um, which I don't use very often, so it's quite nice to have the opportunity to use them, to be honest. But they're, they're doing a double job here. Not only do they look lovely on what is a very plain fabric. I mean, if you chose a fabric that wasn't so plain, you might not want to do the stitching. But equally, they're, they're making it a little bit sturdier as well. They're just stiffening it up once again. Because I, we don't want droopy wings. No angel wants droopy wings, do they? Let's face it. So... So there you go. So I've gone down there. I'm, this is going to be hidden, so I know that. So I'm going to stop there. Just show you that stitch. Isn't that lovely? Um, and then I'm going to go down this one with the same stitch again. And I'm going to do these other two as well. So I've used a few different stitches here for my other ones and I will finish trimming those up. One thing I just wanted to say was when I was messing around doing prototypes for this, uh, this, I don't think you can see it very well, this here is two layers of organza which I bonded together again. Uh, word of warning, Use greaseproof underneath and on the top because organza has got much more over, open weave so the glue will end up on your ironing board and on your iron. So ask me how I know. Um, so I would definitely do that but it I don't know that you can really see it in this light but it does give a very lovely effect and I've stitched white on white. Um, I didn't have any around but you can get the uh, sparkly organzas can't you and the iridescent as well um, which would look rather lovely if they're more sort of intense it's still quite stiff actually because of the bonder web it is still quite stiff so it it will still do the same job so I have also uh, those other stitches that I said to you about um, the ones that look like you've scalloped the edge I've used those these are the little um what are going to be the little ruffles um around the neck here okay so that's just looking I've as I say I've done it so that you can have a real play with these stitches and try out as many as you can see what you like what you don't like and what okay. so this is the piece of fabric it's three and a half inches by one and a half and I folded it into the center on both sides and then in half again so that all the rough edges are inside. I'm not worrying about the rough edges at either end. I'm going to tie a little knot in those um, for the hands or stitch them together, depending on what you're going to do with your finished angels. So I'm just going to stitch down the centre of both of these. And I'm just using a regular straight stitch here. There we go. Just going to pull that out and start my next one. Okay, so that's done because I need those arms done so that I can actually put them inside here before I actually stitch my uh, body together. So to make the body of the angel You've got the template piece here and I've got two six, six inch squares. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're the same material or different. So if you want to use up scraps or anything like that, you can. I have drawn around my template here. And what I've also done is where the arms are marked, I've just folded it down so that I can then mark on either side there where the arms need to be. So... If I take that pin out now, what I want to do is just slide these arms in underneath here. Okay. And cross them over. And then I can feel on the top here where the arms are. So I can just then shift them down. And I'm going to use that mark as the top 
so I can feel where it is here. So this is the top of the arm, the bottom of the arm is here and I can see that, look, it's just sticking out there. Turn it round and just do the same thing here, just wiggle it down a little bit. There we go, so I can feel it there running there and if I just fold that back yep there's going to be enough in there so it's going to actually get stitched down if I then lift it this way as well look you can see they're kind of crossing over okay then I am going to put in two pins which are just going to hold those little arms in place for me and then I'm going to stitch all the way around not across the top here but all the way around this shape I use this method a lot when I'm doing this sort of thing where instead of actually cutting out with a seam allowance the shape itself I cut it bigger then I do my stitching and then I will trim it down afterwards I find it much much easier um, and you tend to get a less distorted seam a lot of uh, toy makers use this method as well it's really good for toy making the way you actually just draw around it use that as your stitching line and then trim it up afterwards and you'll find that there's much less sort of stress and strain and stretch on those seams so because it's quite curvy down the bottom here I'm just going to take my stitch length down a wee bit so I'm on about 1.8 stitch length um, and off we go so as I say I've got my actual you're here when I go across the arms because it oh there you go and because I've got a smaller stitch length I don't need to do let me put my pivot on I don't need to do quite as much lift and turn as well because that smaller stitch just allows you to get round those curves a wee bit quicker and smoother so I, I know I always say this but when you're doing curves stitch length is absolutely crucial and the tighter the curve the smaller the stitch length I also think it's really helpful when you're stuffing things because obviously the gaps between the stitches are much much smaller so your stuffing is not going to fall out it's not going to matter on something like this but certainly when you're stuffing toys um, the smaller stitch makes a difference so going all the way around there a couple of lifts so if you haven't got a pivot just be lifting your foot up at the back or if you've got a knee lift use that and then once we get up here we're on the on the straight there we go and again you'll hear it clunk as we not clunk but you know you'll hear the difference in the sound as the needles going through and then I'm just going to little back tack at the beginning there so if I take those pins out this is our angel's body done and I'm going to cut a quarter inch across the top and then less than a quarter inch more like an eighth of an inch around here If you cut your curves quite close on things like this, then you don't need to do all that clipping. And certainly for this project, it's not going to, we don't need to worry about the strength of these seams in the same way as if this was sort of on a clothing thing. And one thing you must remember is do clip into these little bits here where the scalloped edge is and before I turn it through I'm just going to fold down that top edge if you've got your iron handy just press it but if not just do run along with your nail just to give that a turn it'll just make it easier to find that turn if you want to neaten it up later and then we can turn it through the arms will pop out and then I'm just running my finger around the bottom scallops there. So that's our basic angel made.
and now I want to look at the uh, a little ruffle making a little ruffle now you can if you want to just use lace and just gather that up to make a little lace ruffle um, but I thought as we're on the subject of uh, these edging stitches then it might be nice to have a little look at something on there so the one I wanted to look at is I've got this this is in my quilt stitches on here and some of you may have this on your machine I, I might pop it in the uh, just below if I can find the numbers on a couple of models but if you go through you may have this is the serpentine this curly s but if you continue through and you see one like this where it is literally just one curve this is what you get okay and this stitch is a very interesting one well I personally think it's very interesting because this is brilliant if you want to do a lovely scalloped hem um, in the actual fabric okay so for dressmaking particularly and you'll see what I mean when I, I do it on here this is absolutely brilliant what I'm going to do now obviously I can change these settings so five isn't the sort of the widest if I play with it look you can see you can go really quite deep on this I've gone up to eight there so I've got quite a deep scallop going on I never know if it's a scallop or a scallop I think one one is a shellfish and the other is a a technical term for sewing of, of a certain hem but anyway <laughs> can I have answers please in the comments um so I can also take my stitch length, close it up a bit because this is quite a small little project I'm working on. I don't necessarily want a big old curve going on. So I've just closed that stitching up a little bit and I'm going to run it along. I've already I've folded my piece of fabric in half and this little bit, let me just double check. This is seven inches by three. Um, I didn't put that on the pattern, uh, but like I say, if you don't want to use lace and you want to make your own, ruffles just to try a few things out then you need seven inches by three fold it in half right sides together and then I've stitched both edges as well to give myself neat edges when I turn it and then I'm just going to start stitching and I'm keeping the edge of my foot on the edge of the fabric here And you can see it just sort of meandering along. I should have done this in a, a colour. So can you see now that I've now got this shape going on? So what I then do is I trim and again I'm trimming up nice and close. Okay, so eighth of an inch if that. Don't cut your stitching, that's the key with this one. It's a brilliant stitch for uh, the bottom of, you know, shirts or tops. If you're doing like little uh, little shell tops uh, for the summer, things like that. Sleeve hems when you want something just a little bit fancier than a normal hem. So you can see the shape of it. Again, snip into each one of those little dips so that when it turns through you can just run again I tend to just use my nail for this um, one thing that is terribly good for this is lolly sticks ice lolly sticks I think if I show you what you'll kind of get the gist of what particular brand I might be talking about I've been very good I haven't had any in the house for a very long time so I couldn't actually find one but you know Christmas is coming so I felt I needed to uh, keep that under control until all the Christmas goodies arrive so just smooth that out and then give it a press but even without pressing I think you can see how effective that is now you can do that sort of stitching 
obviously without having that stitch on your machine um, and in the past I have done done it by actually drawing usually with a cotton reel or something like that actually drawing it on a little bit like I've done on the, the bottom of the body here and then you just follow that stitching line but for those of you that have got this stitch that's what it's for um, and it makes like I say for dressmaking or if you imagine you were I realise this is the wrong side, but if you were going to do something like on a quilt and you wanted to do a scalloped edge all the way around a quilt as well, um, this definitely is a bit of a, a time saver. So once I've done that, I can then do my gathering stitch, which will gather that up and that's going to make the little ruffle for the top. So to make the little face... I've got two pieces of felt here and I have drawn round the template and then I've taken my stitch length down and I've just gone a straight stitch, tiny straight stitch all the way around there and then I can trim it up and again I'm going in quite close here So that I don't need to clip any curves or anything like that. Okay, and then I'm going to pull it out so that when I make this snip, it only goes through one layer of felt, and then I can go in and make it a bit bigger. This is going to be the back of the head, so it's not going to be seen. So I can turn that through. And then run around the edge with add a bit of stuffing not too much stuffing i wouldn't normally sew this up with the black thread but i'm going to just sew this up quickly because i want to show you how to do the face so i've got a knot in the end as you can see this is going to make it look like some kind of halloween <laughs> halloween costume isn't it on the back look at this don't ever put me in surgery but I want to get to the next bit frankly to show you what to do so having sewn this up obviously you will do a much much neater job than me is the eyes now you can either do French knots but I've I've gone with these little beady eyes and this is a top stitch, so it's going to be nice and strong. So I've gone in where I want the eye to be and then get the little bead. Oh, here we go. Onto your needle and slide it down. And then you want to pull it really tight so that it sinks in. Can you see? And then... I'm going to come up on the other side where I want my other eye and again I'm pulling that tight so it almost makes like an eye socket and then once I've done the two eyes I can then just go back in and do a little a little smiley mouth as well okay as I say <laughs> I'm hoping that you'll do a much better job but we can get our angel back and I'll quickly show you how I put the little beads on for the hands actually I've just you can tie them in a knot which I have done on um, my sort of prototypes hang on where is she I did one um, I'll put a little picture in the corner where I tied it in a knot but actually I think the little beads do look rather nice so I've got my glue gun on and I'm just going to fold it in half and in half again so I can make it quite small um, these I have no idea what size these beads were but you're going to need something with a reasonable size hole and then as I get it in I'm then just going to keep twisting it and as you twist it it should pop out the other side eventually you'll see look that you'll be able to get a pin in and just grab that you can if you want to when you're doing these you could use um 
uh, just ribbon or twine you know you get that stripy twine don't you so that's often quite nice as well like I say I've got my glue gun on so I've kind of measured yep that's about right I'm just going to take it back a tiny bit and then just put a little blob of glue tiny little blob there and then pull that up so the glue is sort of in the in, inside here as well and that's just going to hold that in place and then I can trim that off so that's going to be the the hands okay and I'll do the same on the other side so let's finish this one off so we've got the ruffle on there and here's the wings so it's going to sit here okay and again I'm just going to lift that up and then just do a sort of V shape you can stitch this but I want to finish this just to show you so there we go and I do love a glue gun I have to say especially at this time of year okay and here's the face so I think we'll have this one see look you won't see any of this horrific <laughs> kind of stitching on the back we'll have that a slight jaunty angle I think for this one a quizzical quizzical angel and I this little packet of hair I don't know if I said before I I'm pretty convinced that this has been stolen from Dolly Parton um it's magnificent isn't it if only I'd eaten all my crusts my hair would too would be this curly there we go and I'm just gonna stick some of that on again you can sew it on there we go angels have been completed I've, I've done four for my bunting I might do more it depends I think this will fit above my fireplace um, if you didn't want to do them as angels, just a thought actually, you could do them as little tooth fairy. I thought this because my grandson's just lost another tooth. So uh, you could just give them a little bag or a basket or something to hold, couldn't you, for them to put the tooth in. But anyway, hope you have fun making those and have a little look at those stitches. And that's it for this month. Um, if you want to give a little thumbs up or let me know if this is the sort of thing you're enjoying and also if you want to subscribe you'll get notifications uh, of every video every time we drop a video and there are lots and lots of videos for you to watch so i hope you have a good holiday season and i will see you at the end of december